I'm here for many reasons, but just I recognize the need for people to come who have skills that can help. I recognize that obviously the situation is so difficult for everyone involved, but primarily the, I, I see a lack of attention, a lack of resources being paid to the children of refugees fleeing. There are lots of support for uh, single mothers and for uh, uh, people fighting, and which is laudable and which is which is you know in, in, incredible. I'm glad that's that's happening, but not as much support for children who you know are used to a very regulated, regimented life, who are used to going to school and playing with friends, and are now uprooted and disoriented and isolated. And we came here and are trying to do as much as we can to teach them some English, but also give them some sort of structure, some sort of balance to their life, something that makes them feel less isolated. It gives them a sense of community here. We live right now um, in a housing complex that Ukrainian families live in, and there's children all over the place. And we try to do, probably realistically every other day, some type of fun activity for them. Um, we bake cookies, cake, movie nights, play frisbee outside. Um, there, I personally think there's a big value in having fun and just being a kid. And um, I hope that at least I bring a certain level of fun and enthusiasm um, to these children's lives. We are here I would, as a team, I would say, usually from 2 to 7 p.m. or 2 to 8 p.m. Um, and teach in various groups. Um, for the younger ages, it's more informal education. We play games but are speaking in English and hope that um, they'll learn um, conversational skills. And then um, with older children, we run um, formal education aspects. Um, but as a whole, it's, we try to find ways to make it enjoyable, fun, and have a positive association with English. I think one challenge was just between me, Sarah, and Jack. We all wanted to you know, just help out and do the most we can while we're here. And that meant talking about our strengths and weaknesses and what we can each do best to, you know, be a great team. And also, I think in general, the language barrier, um, you know, Jack speaks some Russian, but Sarah and I only, you know, we don't speak any of the languages that are spoken here. So we really had to use Google Translate a lot. and kind of piece things together in order to understand the situation as much as we could so that we could help. Uh, my father is from Odessa and he immigrated in 78. Uh, so he speaks Russian, his whole side of the family speaks Russian. So I had a little bit of exposure from when, from when I was young. Uh, but my mother is American, studied Russian in college, but doesn't speak with the same level of fluency now. So most of it has just been individual study at university. I'm very, very grateful to be in a place where I can use my language skills to actually help people and, and improve people's lives. When the invasion began in February, I knew I, there was something I wanted to do, but I didn't know how exactly to best translate the skills that I had to doing something meaningful. And I think I found, I think I found that. I think I've, I'm using the skills that I have, the knowledge that I've work towards to, to help people the best way that I can. Yeah.